welcome back to the channel and today I want to do another different take on the bomb bays because we all know that the bomb bays uh, are designed to drop bombs from the air um, pretty much primarily with aerial based vehicles but I want to now convert them to be used on a ground based vehicle and if you're wondering how that's going to be done, I'm going to be using the concept that I built uh, not too long ago where I converted the bombs into bullets. And I'm going to try to make a mortar launching vehicle that actually uses the bomb bays as mortars instead of like rockets or other things like that. Here we go. So this is my bullet bomber plane where I actually converted the bombs into bullets. I just got to I just got to take off real quick. Yeah, so these use a programmed with logic uh, piston system to push the bomb bays as they launch the bombs. And as you can see, it actually creates a pretty nice uh, like bullet kind of trajectory for these bombs. Now, I was thinking if we put these on a land vehicle and have them angled kind of at an angle, then they should kind of act as mortars. It might be really, really hard to aim and figure out where they're going to land, but... Oh, okay, that was terrible. Didn't wait for them to recharge in time. But I think it'd be kind of a fun concept, so why don't we give it a try? All right, so I'm actually going to use this as my starting point because I want to make sure that I have the exact same programming that I used here. So I think these five logic gates are what I need. And these five logic gates activate these two pistons and this bomb uh, bay. This is what we need to attach to our vehicle and have it angled up. So looking at it, it's not gonna be easy to hide this thing because this is what it's gonna look like by default. Actually, I might be able to. If it's facing straight up, maybe. Yeah, let's start with it straight up. And then after everything compresses, uh, I can have it angle and might be able to hide it in the vehicle vehicle a little bit more gracefully. Okay, so first up, let's just do a proof of concept. Does this even work uh, in theory? So to do that, I'm just going to put down the most basic of foundations for a ground-based vehicle. All right, so now if this is on a land vehicle, does it still work? Okay, that is going to, we're going to have to be really heavy. We're definitely going to have to be really heavy because that is a lot of force to counteract. But as you can see, we just mortared ourselves. So it seems like a promising test so far. All right, what is the range going to be like on this thing? Okay, let's take a steering hinge, set this thing to 45 degrees. All right, so if I had this mortar sticking out of the back of my vehicle. Okay, I mean, it is going to be hard to counteract that amount of force. But look at how, look how far that goes. Just the first shot. That first shot's the, like the true shot. Let's see where it lands. That's funny, the first shot actually lands last just because of how messed up every other shot is. Okay, so now that we know that this is a proof and concept that is gonna work, now I need to build a vehicle that is gonna accommodate this. And uh, this I'm actually going to save as its own thing. So now I think uh, the way to do this with uh, duplicating logic things is you actually don't wanna copy and paste because when you copy and paste, everything gets cross-wired between the copy and pasted things. If I want these to be completely independent logic systems, I need to uh, spawn it back in from the blueprint itself. This is how I'm going to have it mapped out. And I think I'm going to do this so that they are offset from each other. This is going to be a massive amount of force to try to counteract. I think that's going to be the biggest challenge of this is not having the vehicle flip out when I do this. So yeah, if I change the timing delay of this one logic gate, I can have them go in between each other. And I'm thinking I actually want it to last longer than just the ones, I think it's like one second that uh, the bombs get pushed out in. So I will have the first one be delayed by 0.12. Uh, so that way these two center runs are gonna go poo, 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 poo. But then after those two are finished, then I want the outside ones to begin. So I think the delay for this one has to be is it just one second on the dot? Okay, so now if I click. Okay, whoops. I did not let them charge first. Okay, here we go. Okay, it worked. It worked. It worked. It worked. So now this one. Okay, you're welcome. All the bombs will be 1.12. And actually, I think I want it to do like left and right. So this will be one. Yep. And then this will be zero. And this will be 0 0.12. Okay, so now. They should go one side, then the other side. Ready? Oh, that looks great. They're all going to come down right on top of me, aren't they? No, they're going to be angled back slightly, right? 
That is a great round of mortars. Now imagine that on an actual vehicle. So I've got the programming done. Now I just need to build a vehicle that uh, can hold all of this and adjust the angle of all of this. All right, so now this is where the hinges are gonna come into play. So now if these things are on hold position, now I can manually control... Oh, I don't want them to angle that way. I can manually control their angle like this. I kind of wish I could have them start at a certain angle because I want them to start 45 degrees and then I just want to have the ability to raise them up and down. That's way too sensitive though. Oh, that's interesting. Even though they are straight, you can see they clearly go off to the... They, they clearly, uh, they gravitate towards the center. That is actually kind of really strange to me that they gravitate center mass. It works either way. It's just going to create a nice spread, I guess. I wonder if that changes in this direction. It actually looks a lot more straight. I wonder what's causing that. I just remembered the only necessary part of this mechanically is from the pistons and forward. These logic gates don't have to be attached here. So I could make this so much more compact if I just take all of this logic and group it together elsewhere, because this is not going to affect its functionality whatsoever. All right, there we go. This is my logic block. This is what controls all of the uh, pistons. So I will just put this somewhere down here. Now, this is all that really matters when it comes to being attached. So like, look at how much more compact that is. Ooh, that looks good. That looks really, really good. Yeah, that looks way more stable. Okay, good. And now that gives me so much more freedom to place these without them interfering with stuff. All right, so now I'm going to see what I can get away with when it comes to building around these things without actually interfering with them. Because as far as I'm aware, I really... I, I, th I don't know if I can build much more than this high without actually interfering and uh, causing issues. So let's find out. Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is already looking way less stable. So now is this going to mess me up? Yeah, that messes things up a little bit, doesn't it? I'm really going to have to be careful with how these things are enclosed. I mean, that seemed to work fine that time. Oh, oh, yep. Yeah, you can definitely see there's issues. Okay. I think... I may have figured out how much I can build around these things now without interfering with them too much. So now you can see I have... Oh, there's a little bit of a problem there aiming. They're getting caught on the corners in a weird way. You know, it, it, once they start shooting, it's fine though. They kind of settle into their spot. You see that? Now they're settled. You know, maybe I should just have it on 45 degrees by default, but it would be kind of nice to have that aiming capability, you know, just to like be able to aim up a little bit more for a higher angle of attack. I mean, look at that. That looks pretty cool. Oh, whoops. Oh, don't hold the button down. See, I wish. So on the uh, steering hinges, you can set an angle range, but it automatically applies to both directions. I wish each direction you could set because I do not want them to be able to go uh, past the zero degree point in the backwards direction at all, but I want them to be able to go forward and back after you put them down. But I think I'm pretty happy with what I've managed to build here. So now I've got to attach this to a vehicle and have it somehow still be stable. Because if I do not have this anchor block set down, uh, this is what I'm dealing with. Yeah, so it's not the most stable, but I think it is something I can work with. Oh, you know what? I kind of got the cool idea that it might be fun to make this thing somewhat of a turret as well. So my vehicle can face in a certain direction and then I could turn this entire thing to the side and do a sideways like mortar strafe on, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm going to be able to hit with these, to be honest. I mean, theoretically anything, but as far as the aiming factor goes, it's going to be uh, a long shot, literally. Okay, so now it is going to be my job here to actually build a vehicle underneath this that isn't going to be completely thrown off balance by firing this. All right, I think I've built the basic foundation of this thing. I have no idea how functional it is, but I'm already at uh, 497 out of 700 complexity. Let's see how it feels just driving around. I put a bunch of engines in the back there. Um, the steering is... There's some problems. We got some problems with the steering. All right, here we go. So now um, I should have the ability... To blow myself up. Okay, so like I was saying, I should be able to rotate this thing and then I should be able to aim with the 45 degrees. There we go. And then, oh yeah, that looks great. That looks so good. 
Oh, look at that. I love how long range this is. These things really fire far, don't they? As you can see, I went with kind of like a military truck kind of feel. Um, but still some work to do. This thing is not very fast. It is like the least aerodynamic vehicle I've ever built, I think. Ready? Aerodynamics. Look at this. This is so bad. Actually, I, I didn't even really pay that much attention, but it seemed like the fact that I didn't notice... This thing handles the uh, the feedback from those those launches really, really well. Really well. Like, we're already heavy enough. I thought I was gonna have to put a bunch of weights or something, but no, this actually seems great. But one of the things I was thinking, with how big I've built this, I think it might be doable. I don't know if this is gonna be a nightmare to handle or not, but what if we actually have a deployable turret? where we actually contain it like we're hiding it inside like we're just a normal military vehicle driving along and then all of a sudden the top opens up and then the mortar launching thing turret comes out and then uh yeah then we start launching mortars i think that might be pretty cool so i put sails on the back so it looks like there's actually like a tarp it's it makes it even worse for aerodynamics, but um, I just think it adds a little bit of a weird realism factor to it. All right, but now I have the uh, the challenging part of containing this inside this back section and then having it uh, having it deploy somehow. Okay, the really difficult thing is that all of the pistons that activate have to start in the fully extended position because that is just in build mode. You cannot place a piston in the contracted position. I'm essentially going to have to have it already open and then have it close when it spawns in. But it would be really nice if I could just have it in the closed position and then like have the programming to open it. I don't I can't even build it in the open position that I want to. Just because of how the steering hinges are gonna stack up on top of each other, I want these steering hinges to be 90 degree angles. I have to build them in the straight position, but I want their starting and end position to have like 90 degree angles in them. All right, so I have theoretically the stuff in the right positions to uh, do what they need to do. The problem is programming is way more complicated than I intended it to be. Um, and I don't know how to do it efficiently. But the idea is um, I can open this up and bring this out like this. And the flaps actually kind of close around the side so they, they're nice and streamlined. And then I'll have full control over this thing uh, to do what I want to do. And then at any point I should be able to bring that back down and then close these again there we go but it's a lot more complicated than i want it to be because i need a separate button for closing than opening the way that i have this programmed right now and uh the reason why is because this starts in a position that is neither fully opened nor fully closed because the fully open position requires these to be in 90 degree increments. And then the fully closed position requires only one of them to be in a 90 degree increment. And both of those cannot be the starting position. So the way that I currently have this manually controlled is um, I press number three to close one of them by 90 degrees. And then when I press number two, it opens both of them by 90 degrees to get it to, uh, to, get it to close against the sides. But then to get it to close again, I press number three again, which kind of toggles off the other ones and then toggles on the initial starting position again. So that seems to work, but I would rather just have one button do everything where it's just on or off, open or closed. Ha! Ha, I figured it out. Oh yes, check this out. All right, here is my control system right here. So I have an altitude sensor, which is just basically my on signal. I always use this when I want something to be constantly on. So this is set to an altitude of negative 500 meters. So as long as we're above negative 500 meters, this will always have a signal going out. And I have that going into this XOR logic gate, which means that this will be outputting a uh, signal if only one input is uh, outputting a signal. So because this one is always gonna be outputting a signal, then it is gonna be triggering this to cause it to close, which is gonna have that one go by 90 degrees. So you can see that the output of uh, this XOR gate is going into this bottom set of steering hinges. So now over here, I have my control logic gate. This is number two. This is gonna be my toggle to open and close. Now, when I press number two to open everything up, 
that also is going into this XOR gate, which is going to actually trigger it to turn off because now there's going to be two inputs, which is going to reverse the signal instead of just having that one input. So that is going to cause this negative output of the closing to undo, causing it to go straight up. But also, this goes into this logic gate, which is going to all of the steering hinges to give them a positive 90 degrees, which is going to give them both the opening signal. So now, by the push of a single button, you can see by default it closes. Then I press one button, everything opens up, and that's set to a toggle. So now when I press the button again, everything closes up. So now all I gotta do is um, have this also control when this comes up and down. So these pistons, I will no longer have controlled with a button. This will give a positive signal for these to extend. So now when I press number one, yes, everything acts in unison together now. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. That actually wasn't as hard to figure out as I was uh, worried it was going to be. What I was thinking about is right now, I can shoot the bombs in the closed position. Nothing stopping me from doing that. It would be ideal if the that functionality was just overridden in the closed position, but I don't know if I can do that. I'm going to add a whole set of AND logic gates. These AND logic gates are now going to have to correspond to their respective uh, mortar. All right, and then I'm going to have to unhook the previous uh, logic gate that was controlling these. So now the input control, I hope this doesn't mess up the timings. Yeah, the input control is going to go into these logic gates, but they shouldn't activate unless this is also active. It has to be this logic gate. This is the one that enables it to shoot. I'm clicking, trying to shoot, not working. I open up. Let me aim these down. Oh, that looks great. And then I click. And it's wobbly, very wobbly. I don't like that. What is happening now? What? That wasn't happening before. Oh, no. You had so much promise. I don't think I actually tried it in the aimed down position. Okay, maybe I, I'm just going to uh, copy and paste these. I'm just going to add stability by adding more pistons. Please be more stable. Why are you shooting backwards? There's a little bit of issue with it, but it might be good enough. Now we come back and I can no longer fire the weapons. All right, I've got way too invested in this and I just spent a whole lot of time uh, decking this thing out. And I've also improved it even more uh, as far as the functionality goes. Cause now by default, as soon as this thing spawns in, it actually spawns in with the, uh, the mortars already angled down. So you don't have to do that manually, but once you uh, bring it out and deploy it, you still have full control over it. And then no matter what position you leave in, It'll actually compact itself when you uh, when you close it back up. You can see it automatically goes into the uh, the angled position, which is its smallest position as well. That was actually not too hard to do. I just kind of I hooked it into the AND gate that is dependent on it being only the altitude sensor giving the output. Uh, so that way it toggles it to this position. And then when it comes out, it is no longer toggling it to that position, but it retains the position because it's in toggle mode. And then you have free control over it. And then it toggles it back once you uh, put it back down. All right, so now I think it's about time. Now that we have a cool looking, fully functional vehicle, let's see if I can actually hit anything with it. And you know what? I think over here might be one of the best places to start because I'm thinking that the bunkers are going to be the biggest and easiest targets to hit. It's all about me range finding. I got to figure out how far away I actually have to be. And maybe I should have given this thing some more engines. And I'm not, I'm not even sure how many more engines are going to make a difference just because of the aerodynamics. I think I'm like reaching terminal velocity immediately, pretty much. All right, you know what? We're getting into enemy territory here. Let's start deploying. And I'm going to go ahead and release the mortars. I don't know if that's going to go far enough to hit that bunker out in front of me, but let's see what happens. That was amazing. First try, first hit. I think this uh, this anti-air cannon over here on the mountain that's, that is definitely trying to shoot at me. I don't know. I think I'm too close to it now. Oh, it's definitely shooting at me now. I really... Ugh. All right, I got to get over here so it shoots the mountain in front of it. Oh, we just got it. We just got it. Did you see that? All right, now 
Oh, we got another another bunker over here. So I think I can actually, I can go over this. That's the whole point of a mortar. I can be protected behind this mountain, and then I can launch these mortars uh, up in the air here, and I can just rain down. Oh, that one went way off to the left there. Yeah. Rain down destruction from a distance. Look at that. I got it. I can't believe that like. Both of the bunkers, one hit, one shot, one kill. I didn't even have to uh, readjust or anything, but there's one more bunker left and then we got the big uh, factory there or whatever it is. But I gotta find this bunker. Oh, there it is. All right, here we go. I don't know if that's gonna hit that bunker or not. Oh, I'm zoomed way out now. No way, another one. And then now there's the factory right in front of me. Let's go ahead and rain down destruction on the factory. It looks like a lot of them are kind of going off to the right for whatever reason. Oh, I'm not, I wasn't close enough. I did hear some, oh, you know what? I forgot, I can aim this thing. There we go. Oh, they were way off to the right. That still might be enough though. Look at that. This is a really good creation, actually. I'm really happy with this thing so far. All right, what else can we hit with these things? It really, that seems to be probably its strength is those things right there. I wonder if I can hit um, the flat cannon down there. What if I settle in right here? Is that gonna be enough? Come on, look how far away it is. You know, it's it's lower as well. So I think I'm still going too far. Oh, there we go. We're hitting the uh, island now at least, but it's still a little bit too far. This is gonna be the one. There it is, it is gone. So satisfying when that happens. Yeah, this is uh, not an easy vehicle to use to actually get hits, but it's satisfying when it happens. I really would love to get a hit on a plane though. It's not what this thing is built for, but it would be absolutely amazing. Here he comes. Oh, it happened. I can die happy. You know what? I'm not even going to die anyway because this vehicle is just OP like that. All right, I've more than doubled the engine power of this thing, and I've gotten like another 10 miles per hour out of it. But I just want to get over to these balloon areas because I haven't taken down a balloon yet, and I feel like that's actually going to be way easier than the planes. All right, let's conceal our secret weapon as we approach these balloons. Okay, here we go. We approach the balloons. I think I can hide out right here, use the distance to my advantage, deploy the mortar, aim, and launch. I don't know if I'm close enough or not. Nope, definitely not close enough. I don't know. Oh, actually, this might be it right here. Here we go. Please hit it. There it is. Just like that. No problem at all. These smaller... I was going to say these smaller balloons might be a little bit harder to hit. But you know what I'm really surprised at right now? I blew myself up and somehow... I have survived. Uh, I think I'm gonna go over him. Yeah, this is uh, not a close range weapon. Definitely not a close range weapon. Unless you get close enough like this that you can do that. That's the only instance. Kind of like I did with the plane as well. All right, well, I am super happy with this thing. Definitely spent way more time designing it than I expected to, but I got exactly what I was hoping to get out of it. Um, a bomb bay mortar vehicle land vehicle, which is amazing. So if you guys enjoyed this, let me know if you'd like to see any other similar concepts. If you have ideas on um, how weapons could be used or anything else in the game, really. Just interesting ideas on what we could make. Oh, I got a flat tire. Let me know down in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this, you'll probably enjoy some more that you can find right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.